Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my channel. This is my second video, and before I even get started, I want to give a big shout out to all my friends they spent yesterday, or however, whenever it was ago, looking at my video and giving me some constructive criticisms, giving me some constructive criticisms, that was a struggle, to help me improve, you know, my shooting and everything like that. So absolutely, if you do have some of that, please put it in the description, or in the comment section, I will absolutely read it, and I really do appreciate that. I thought one thing I wanted to include all of my videos and again, I think it was more per personal because I feel like I had this panic of like, oh my god, I haven't read any books at the end, but like, I'm always saying that. And then I look, I'm like, I've read over 200 books this year. So I feel like this is just a good way for me. So I want to include like just a kind of a, like a little entrance blurb of like, this is what I'm currently reading. So at the moment, I am following along with the audiobook for The Falconer by Elizabeth May. I'm only a little bit in, a couple chapters in. I'm actually really surprised I'm like already in love with it. Just based on the cover, again, it was told cover by, and I heard people say, like, oh, it's a historical fiction, Scotland. That's, like, totally my wheelhouse. And then I started it, and there's, like, fairies and everything in it, so I'm definitely really enjoying that so far. And I am physically reading Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. I think this is a debut novel. I actually got this in the think it was September, the Hootloop box that is sold on Etsy. I'll link that in the description down below. She runs a book box every other month and you can buy it with their single purchases through her Etsy shop and they're like fantastic boxes and she's like the owner's a wonderful person. So I'm physically reading this. I'm only like two chapters in so far I think and it's really interesting so far. There's like cartography and like exploring adventure so it's definitely going to be like an, an adventure story and I'm really excited about that. Um, I originally wasn't going to read this quite yet and then my friend Meg read it and has been pestering me to read it because she needs to talk to someone about it. So peer pressure. Also, this is my new mug, so you may see, favorite mug. You may see this in a couple videos. I was at Marshalls because my city finally got a Marshalls, and we're like six hours from the closest Marshalls or closest anything else. And I'm in a bunch of book club groups, and at any time drama happens, I saw one time someone posted the thing saying, like, relax, drama llama, and I freaked out because I thought it was the funniest thing in my, I've ever heard. So me and my friend Melanie now get tagged, and we just start posting llama gifts, and it tends to ease the tension, so... Yeah. And like one of the people actually said something else like your caption should be like save the drama for your llama. And then I found, oops, wrong side, this mug that says save the drama for your llama. So for like six bucks too. So I mean like gold for me. Also, I have a caffeine addiction, which you may notice in some of my videos. <laughs> so today I wanted to go over books that I have read more than once in 2017. And this is like very odd for me. So I've never had the opportunity to be reading as much as I am now. And my friends have referred to me as like a speed reading ninja, <laughs> just because I'm used to having to cram things in together. So this year has been like a fantastic reading year for me. I've read over 200 books. I've been combining physical copies with audiobooks. I thought there were some really cool books that I've read more than once, or I know that I will be reading more than once. There's still another month left of the year, but I do plan out my reading for the most part. And yeah. So there are, actually let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books actually that I have read twice or will be reading twice, and I'll be kind of clarifying that. So the first book that I've read more than once this year is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, and I've actually already read the first sequel, The Mime Order, which is somewhere on my shelf here, and I own the third one. I'm like delaying reading the third one um, just until I know when the fourth one's coming out, because the cliffhanger on this one was like, it hurt my heart and the second one was so 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 cool so I mean like I think I kind of just want to like I think this is gonna be one of those books that I'm gonna marathon it each time a new book comes out so when book six comes out because it's supposed to be seven books total when book six comes out I'll read book one two three four five six I don't know and this is also kind of a surprising like I bought it because on the book outlets um boxing day sale last year Honestly, because it's the first name is my name. I mean, it's a f purely logical reason to buy books. This is why I have a book buying problem. But anyways, I actually read this twice in a, in a month. I, was, I absolutely loved it. I finally read the description right when it was selected as the book of the month book for the Life and Lit book club. And my, I'm like, eh, it sounds kind of dark. I'm not super kind of into this kind of stuff. Whatever, I'll give it a go. And if I don't like it, then I can just unhaul it and make room on my bookshelf for another book. I was wrong. This book was fantastic, and it's a debut author, a debut book. I was mind blown by that, and then I found out it was optioned to be adapted into a TV show. 
I am so here for that. In general, it's got like alien invasions and slavery and like kind of a chosen one and like these weird magic. It is such a high level fantasy. And there is, I believe, an index in here or a glossary for terms because it does have, like I said, it's very high fantasy. But I really enjoyed it and I followed along with the audiobooks and the audiobooks were fantastic. So if you definitely want to try this one, absolutely look at getting the audiobook for sure. This is a book that I actually haven't read the second time yet, but I will be likely later this month. The Last Namsara by Kristen, I'm not going to say the last name right, Cicerelli? Cicerelli? Cicarelli? I was thrilled because I found out too, she's a Canadian author. I found that out after, which was so, so cool. And obviously, I mean, the cover, the cover is gorgeous. And I've seen like the UK cover and it's kind of like a crest on the front of it, which I also thought was really, really cool. But yeah, so it's got like, just like the simplest term that I can explain this in is like dragons and dragon hunting kind of thing. I read it the, like the th three days after it came out, I think. And then it got picked as the December book of the month for the Life and Lit group. So I will be reading it likely later this month, if not the beginning of December, which I'm so, so excited for. The third book that I have read, I believe three times, oh, I want to say three times this year is Daughter of the Pirate King. This came in the, as you can tell from like the letter that's sticking out here, in the March Owl Crate, I believe it was March, they did like ship, Ships and Seas or something like that. It is a short book, it's not a long book. It is the funniest, not funniest, second funniest book I've ever read. The main character, Alasa, I actually mentioned her in my very first video. She is my book girlfriend. She is sassy and snarky. And the dialogue is so reminiscent of the Gilmore Girls to me. Just like the quick map. I feel like that's something I struggle with in a lot of YA books is like someone will insult someone and that person just takes it. And I'm just sitting there like, you should have said this. You should say this. That person, this book actually has this person saying it. I think I was even more surprised because it is a debut work. And comedy is difficult to come off, like, to write. So I was really, really pleasantly surprised. Um, so I read it and then, like, just fell in love. And then I found out there was going to be a sequel. So I got one of the women at my work to contact one of her friends. And she happened to have a copy of the sequel arc on her desk. So I got my copy of the arc. And it's not as good as this one. But I feel like it's just a different direction for this character, which is actually really excited about. And... I just thought it was a really promising beginning duology. She's writing something about like female Vikings or something right now too. So I'm definitely all here for that. The next book that I will likely be reading more than once is Snow Like Ashes. I read this trilogy, I think I started it in like February. And then I read the all three books over the course of like the next like three or four months. I think I absolutely love this series. It is like a fantasy with some action and questing but there's a lot of politics and like relationships and manipulations and I've really enjoyed the writing so if you're someone who really likes politics and maneuvering there is this is a definitely a good one to try and I have a couple friends that I keep reminding Sarah Rash is an instant buy author for me now I keep reminding them that her next book is These Rebel Waves is coming out and all I know is like there's pirates and there's like I'm just here for pirates. I'm so excited that this is becoming a trend in YA. I'm really hoping that someone's going to come up with like a gay pirate mermaid kind of thing. I don't know if it'll be this series, but I'm like here for anything like mermaids and pirates and seafaring. Apparently that's just an unknown love of mine that I found out about this year. So I keep reminding friends to read this and I'm finally got them to commit to because it is the end of the year. Everyone's all of a sudden really, really, really willing to buckle down and commit to something. I've got a couple people that I said I would group read this with. So hopefully that will keep them on track. Even if they don't go and don't show up to it, I'm still definitely going to reread it. And I think this whole series has gorgeous, gorgeous covers too. So really excited about that. The next book that I will be reading more than once this year is... Stalking Jack the Ripper. I remember debating for a while being like, eh, I feel like I, I think it was the person on the cover. Though I do enjoy the cover, I am someone that is very hesitant to touch books that have like a half no face really showing or someone behind from the back, like basically ever cover, cover from Fallen Kingdoms. That to me just screams tropey. And that to me screams that there maybe isn't a whole lot else to be luring readers there. So they use something as publishers that they think will appeal to everyone. Every cover nowadays is like, you know, Throne of Glass, all the 
uh, Shinda Williams ones now and all this. They're changing them and it's honestly really infuriating that they do that. But either way, I enjoyed this one the first time I read it. I kind of, I think I gave it like a three out of five stars, something like that. I enjoyed it, but I do, I do remember at the time I read it as more like a, I need to read this book. I should just read it. I don't think I read it out of want or joy. So I think that really did influence it. And I've seen that that has influenced my other readings of certain books. So I'm going to give this one another re uh, another go. It is the book of the month for the Life and Light group for November. So I'm going to be reading it. And I also, I enjoyed it enough to pick up the sequel, which came out this year, uh, Hunting Prince Dracula, which this is in Victorian England. The sequel is in Romania. And I'm hearing really, really good things about that one too. So I'm hoping that I'm going to enjoy it more. I love historical fiction. I love fantasies. I love strong female characters. I love when there is science. Oh, I'm so excited about that kind of stuff. So hopefully, hopefully it works out. I legitimately have a caffeine problem and I don't apologize for it. That's just life. The second to last book that I've read more than once this year is My Lady Jane. This was a 2016 release, actually, I believe. This particularly piqued my interest because I did my undergraduate degree in history. I originally went in wanting to focus on the Tudors, so definitely like this. I ended up coming out doing Russian history and Tsarist Russian Tsarist Russia and, and all that stuff and German. So I mean, I really like just diverted off that path. But I still really enjoy reading about the Tudors. I think my original thing about it was like the Philippa Gregory. Everyone gets introduced to the Tudors by Philippa Gregory. And I think there was a series called like Steph by Stephen Myers or Carol Myers, something like that. I'll find it and put it in the, the in, uh, up here. It was like diary entries. It was like a middle grade YA. And I remember reading that being like, oh, this is really, really cool. Why don't you go pick up the sequels? So this book is essentially what I would, I kind of refer to it as like Monty Python for YA in a book form. It's super trolly. There's a sequel coming out. I think it was originally supposed to be a standalone and then they were like, oh crap, people really like this. So there's a sequel coming, I think it's called My Plain Jane that I've pre-ordered already. It's not coming out till like next July or something like that. And it's got deckled edges, which I'm such a big fan of. This is like a this kind of introduced me to the concept, not even just like the existence of, the, the concept of having historical comedy, because that's not something I really ever like thought of. And the narration of this book is so funny. They just full on like one point they're just like, and we want to apologize on behalf of like uh, to all the English because we're going to butcher your history now, which like it, I, my life goal is to find a man who can transform at night or at day into a horse. And the last book that I have read more than once this year, I've actually read it three times. I may read it a fourth time this year. And I'm definitely going to read it at least once more before the sequel comes out next year. And it's a really controversial book, is The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest. I originally got like informed of this book right before its release because my friend found it on Goodreads and was like, dude, there's a book coming out in YA from a big publisher that at its launch date is going to have like a one star rating. And I was like, all right. And then I went there and saw like someone had gotten an ARC review and ripped it apart and called it like the most offensive book that has ever been read or written. And I was, so I read the, the review and remember going like, I'm surprised publishing industry, especially in YA, would publish something like this, especially a main one, with all of like the claims that we all want diversity and equality and we want it to be forward thinking and open minded. So I was like, you know what? I want to read this and try and understand why they would publish something like that. As you can tell from all the flagging, I originally sat down with a highlighter ready to like just flag everything problematic. I ended up absolutely loving this book and came out with the exact opposite interpretation of the book, which is kind of why I love book two and the community. And like the person who reviewed the art, by all means, she's welcome to have her opinion. She read it. She did a very thorough review, even though I disagreed with it. She put the time and effort into it. So I got to give her that. People just started one starring a book and blatantly saying that they had not read it. That to me is immensely problematic. You can leave a, re a review in your without a rating and just put a link and saying, hey, I don't think you should read this because, and insert the link. There were hundreds, I'm not kidding, you can go look because Goodreads hasn't fixed it. There are hundreds of comments of people saying, one star, I did not read it, and then linking to the original blog. I think at this point, if you're doing that, especially after the first few, it's just overkill. You'd have to be blind on Goodreads to not see it at this point. 
I also thought it was kind of ironic because it pushed I myself along with a bunch of other people to actually read the book. I don't know that I would have picked it up if there hadn't been all of the attacking on it. I read it in one sitting. It was fantastic. I loved all the topics that it's bringing up. And I'm really excited for the sequel. There was a prequel novella that came out maybe like four months after. I read that and was like, oh my god, I have to go back and start connecting dots. So I went and reread it again. And then suddenly, like two months ago or something like that, someone posted on the group set I'm in was like, hey, I just read this book. Does any Has anyone else read it? I have so many questions and feels. And I was like, <sighs> so now I have a group chat of people and someone brought up a theory of they think this is how the, pa- the magical powers of main characters are the main character is and I like had this like like straight off look of oh my god that would make sense so I went back and reread it and this is where a lot of like the flagging comes from I think it is an extremely important book so if you're on the fence I would really recommend giving it a go I've had a few people just end up saying you know thanks for the recommendation I dnf'd it because of like the it was hard to get through the first couple hundred pages because of the stances of some people and I absolutely understand that it's hard to intake but you also need to look at how it is being represented in the book and how those characters with those views are being represented and the overall tone. I'm really, really excited for that sequel. And one of the big takeaways of the book, which I just felt was so ironic based on the situation, was you need to evaluate your opinions and your beliefs based on your own experiences. Don't let others, whether they're your parents or politicians or religious figures, influence you based on their biases. Because everyone does have their biases, you're going to have them. So you need to form your own opinions. And that is exactly the opposite of what a lot of people did, which... I feel like just proves the point and the validity and the need for this book. So those are all the books that I have read or will be reading more than once this year. I will be putting Goodreads links to all of them in the description box down below. I'd love to chat if you read them and loved them. Definitely leave a comment. You can definitely check out all my social media handles, which will also be linked down below. I'm on Instagram, Litzy, I have my own book blog, and obviously on YouTube. Thanks for watching!